Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to be talking about a new Sony product. Um, Sony's new MAS A100 beam forming microphone. So as a little bit of background, <clears throat> we spoke to a, no, a large number of universities and colleges about um, uh, their issues with audio and um, some of the things we uncovered were based on who we were talking to, uh, everybody seemed to have different points of view. So from the instructors, we learned that they, they want to present smoothly. They're not uh, real happy with having to hook up a lavalier mic um, when they're using a single uh, handheld mic, then they only have one hand for writing or, or they have to use a hand to hold that mic. And then obviously when you use a gooseneck mic, at a, a teacher's podium, then you're you're stuck in that position to, to be able to be recorded properly. Students certainly want to hear lectures clearly. Certainly those big lecture halls where uh, it's very hard at the back to hear without some form of amplified audio from the instructor. Um, some of the comments made to us were a lot of instructors do not use microphones and then certainly uh, when using a lavalier mic you sometimes pick up the rustling of clothing that's touching that mic and then from the AVIT department uh, what we heard is they they certainly want to be able to record lectures with the, the audio but the big issue for them is having to manage a very large number of microphones and in particularly uh, the batteries for those you know body packs um, so they also have to deal when deal with failure from either the batteries or the microphone itself and then in some cases the microphones walk out of the room because the the instructor uh, forgets that they were wearing it so with that Sony came up with an idea and from that, we have created the beam forming ceiling microphone with two channels, one for speech reinforcement and one for recording. The advantages and the value proposition of this microphone is that it's, it's hands free, it's location free. These are mounted where uh, they'll pick up the instructor clearly. They can also pick up questions uh, from students. Very easy to hear, very easy to install. Basically, it's PoE, and we're using the Dante protocol. So it's a single Cat5 cable to a PoE switch, and that's the entire installation. As I mentioned, we have two channels. One is for um, speech reinforcement, which would be amplifying the instructor's voice through the, the PA system in the room or, or auditorium. And then the second is the recording channel. And each of these two channels have different um, capture ranges with the main channel, you're looking at about three meters. Um, and then for the clear recording, you have up to seven meters or 23 feet. Three meters is pretty close to 10 feet. And then the idea is the mic would be within that 10 feet between the, the average instructor's mouth, let's say the height of the, where their mouth is and, um, and then the height of the, the microphone. With the main channel, uh, we have a feedback reduction uh, loop. So, by calibrating, we pick up where there could be fixed points of noise. Um, for example, the, the heating and cooling system, if there's a projector mounted near where the mic is, we would be able to identify where that fan noise is, and then we're reducing that. We also reduce feedback coming out of the speakers. We locate where the speakers are during that calibration. We also have a gain limiter. So if, if somebody starts talking very loud, uh, we turn the gain down. We have actually turn a limiter on. The idea is we keep the volume output of the, of the mic uh, pretty level through, uh, you know, whether somebody talks quietly or somebody talks actually loud. And we, we are then able to uh, bring that volume level down so that it's a constant level coming out of the microphone. We said the auto calibration, we generate a test signal, um, takes about 10 seconds. So you would do this calibration once. If you moved the location of the speakers, uh, 
you would need to recalibrate, but the point is single calibration when the room is quiet and all the equipment is on. And then from there, uh, we set the optimal parameters for uh, the output of the mic to the PA system. We also offer a free uh, system manager called the MASM-1. This would, um, you register all of the microphones, you can group them by room, by floor, by building. Um, what's nice is it lets you calibrate from this single uh, software panel, if you will, and you've also got the ability to mute the mics, turn them on, off. You can also upgrade firmware when we do a firmware um, upgrade for the mic system um, from this microphone array manager you're able to um, perform that firmware upgrade across all of your microphones so if it's a single point of control and certainly uh, very useful to the AV department on both channels we have noise reduction um, as I mentioned before when we do that calibration we're able to pick up you know, noise uh, from fixed point sources, such as, say, the fan on a projector. And once that's been, um, once the mic system is calibrated, then that, that noise reduction uh, remains on. You do have the ability to turn off the noise reduction, but uh, generally that's defeating the purpose of why we have noise reduction. We've also got AGC or automatic gain control. Again, the idea is if somebody is talking very quiet, we'll raise the gain. If somebody talks loud, we'll reduce the gain. And the intent is the audio level coming out of the mic remains constant. And that's on both the main channel and the recording channel. As I mentioned, it, the, the mic is um, power, over Ethernet or PoE, not PoE plus. We're using the Dante protocol. We also have AES 67 support if if that's what the uh, customer needs. There is an LED on the mic, um, three different colors. If it's green, you're active. If it's red, you're in standby. And then uh, orange, you would be muted. There's also an API for third-party control systems such as Crestron, Extron, AMX. Uh, it's very basic. You can, you can um, basically turn the gain up and down. You can go change modes from standby to active, or you can um, change from mute. You can turn on mute or, or turn off the mute. So this is sort of a basic block diagram, um, you would have Cat5 cables going from multiple mics into a PoE hub. Out of that, you would be connected to the Dante uh, mixer with the DSP, and then that would convert your analog out so that you can um, connect the record channel to your lecture capture system, and then the main channel would be run through the amplifier and out through the, the PA system. If you're not using a Dante mixer, uh, it's very similar setup, still Cat5 cables between each mic and the PoE network switch. Coming out of that, you would use a Dante to analog converter and then run that analog output into your analog mixer. And then from there, you'd be able to break out the two channels, again, record for lecture capture and the main for uh, speech reinforcement. We do have an online simulator <clears throat> that can be found at www.pro.sony slash beam mic. Um, this lets you input the height of the ceiling, the size of the room, um, the average height of your presenter, and then from that we can come up and tell you how many mics you would need and how far apart they would need to be. This is the uh, spec sheet. Um, I'm not going to read all of these details to you, but it's available online. So very simple installation. Once everything's up and calibrated, it's hands-free, it's hassle-free. All the instructor needs to do is come in and start talking. So with that, we're going to open up for questions. 
and that's me. I am the product manager until March 31st, and then my role will change, and Chris Swartz will take over as product manager for the uh, beamforming mic. Ace is the marketing manager. So with that, let's get into some of the questions that have been uh, texted in. The first one is, what is the maximum ceiling height? Uh, that, it really only depend. that really actually depends on, um, it's more important that that you stay within the three meters between the um, the speaker's mouth and and the microphone. So there is no height restriction if it's a very very tall ceiling. Um, the mics come with a mounting plate that is a um, uh, visa pattern hole pattern. You'd be able to actually mount this to one of those chief projector mounts and then hang you know, from the ceiling on a pole, you'd be able to put the mic in that way. Uh, another question, how many mics are in the array? So we actually, we have eight microphones that make up the array. Um, the other question is, if it's more than one, can it be directed to a certain um, area? Now that answer is no. We're using adaptive beamforming. We're not doing steered or steerable beamforming. So the idea would be um, we pick up where those noise sources are, and we, we basically reduce the beam in that direction. Another question is, will you need a Dante to analog converter to use with a standard analog mixer? That is correct. You would, you would need to use a uh, Dante to analog converter. Um, in my demo system, I use the um, Audio, AudioNate's um, Dante to analog converter. Another question is, does this product require any maintenance? Uh, basically, no. I mean, once it's installed and turned on, <clears throat> there's really nothing you need to do. Maybe an occasional dusting of the, of the grill, but uh, outside of that, there really shouldn't be any maintenance required. Another question is, are there other colors available? The answer is no, it's, it's white only. And somebody then has asked, is the mic paintable? And if so, does it affect the warranty? Um, I suppose you could paint it. I wouldn't want to paint over the grill because that's how we're picking up the audio. Um, certainly, if you remove the grill or open up the mic, that would uh, void your warranty. Another question, how many mics can be installed in one venue? Well, that's really, it depends on what the purpose is. If you're really just gonna use speech reinforcement, um, it would depend on the height of the ceiling and the width of the front of the room, like basically to cover everywhere the instructor might be walking, you know, um, between the, the teacher's podium and, and say the whiteboards or blackboards, you know, that's, that's what determines it. If you want to do this for, if you're gonna use the secondary channel for recording and you wanna pick up student questions, um, then you would need more mics to cover the area where students are sitting. Um, but there is no real limit. Um, it's probably more bandwidth related, but uh, you know you could have say up to maybe 20 in a given space. Another question is, can the microphone be used for a video conference system? Well, it, it certainly can. We do not have an echo cancellation function in the mic. So it would depend on um, either using an external third-party echo cancellation device, or if you've got an echo canceller built into the codec, for example, a Cisco or, or Polycom. Um, I even believe that, that the software codecs like Zoom um, have a, an echo cancellation feature. That's about it for questions. Um, thank you again for your time today. We appreciate it and we look forward to hearing from you again soon.